And so, it's finally time. Let's head to bed and get ready for a wild ride of burning bread. Yes, we are in fact going to Gekokan High School. The name literally means Moonlight High, which is kind of fitting. Wow, what's up with this place? This school's way too big. And yes, they are in fact using the Persona 3 soundtrack here. I, this song makes me so happy. I just, I love this, this song so much. But yeah, what Yosuke is saying, he's not kidding. You see it in more detail in the anime, but Gekokan High is actually really, really massive. Yeah, like, you can tell it's a very posh, prestigious private school. Wait, if we can't beat him on size, we're totally sunk. Well, <clears throat> next I will explain about our fine educational institution and the reasons for its establishment. That sounds like Derek Steven Prince, and I think he was the principal in the original Persona 3 as well. I'd like to start with a proverb. If a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. I get the feeling you've used that one before. <sighs> Is this principal in love with his own voice or what? Oh, believe me, Persona 3 players know that all too well. Chie, he'll hear you. <coughs> Our school is closed today. But uh, because of this rare opportunity for cultural exchange, some of our students will walk you through these halls. First, though, a student body representative will say a few words. Thank you, Principal. Welcome to Gekokan High School. My name is Chihiro Fushimi. I'm a third year student and the student council president here at Gekokan. Yes, this is indeed the Justice Social Link from Persona 3. It's been two years and she's now taken over for Mitsuru as student council president. She's come a long way. It's an honor to meet you all today. It's also a little funny that she's voiced clearly by um, Wendy Lee here, who went on to replace Fuka's voice actress. But in the anime, Chihiro is clearly voiced by Cassandra Lee Morris, so not really sure why they changed that, especially since Wendy Lee is in the anime as Sayoko. Holy crap, that girl's unbelievable. Uh, Yosuke, um, even though her boyfriend is indisposed at the moment, she's still technically taken. Yeah, you're right. She is cute. I gotta say, she's the most bewitching, bespectacled beauty I've ever beheld. I love how Yuri Lowenthal's performance there, he sounds like he's really, uh, trying hard to keep the alliteration going with beheld. You guys, stop overreacting! This is the first time our school has invited another student body for a true cultural exchange. To learn about others is to learn about oneself, and is the first step on the road to self-betterment. This I believe. Yeah, I think this actually sums up Persona 3 in a lot of ways. To ensure a worthwhile experience for each and every one of you, we will do our best to help you accomplish that. So let us enjoy our time together. Thank you very much. She beat me in every category. All right. Everyone get into groups with your classmates. Oh, no. Excuse me, could I bother you for a moment? This is today's schedule for everyone. Could you hand it out later, please? I feel like at this point Yosuke's going, you can bother me anytime. I forgot to do it myself. Sorry to be so disorganized. And you all came so far. No, I'm still struggling. Even with everyone's support, I'm barely pulling through. I used to get nervous very easily, and I once had a phobia of men, too. In fact, I didn't write the speech on my own. One of the former student council presidents helped me. 
She was the president my first year here, and she was amazing. I always looked up to her. Glad she could take time out of her busy shadow operative schedule to help you with this. I should call her later and tell her the speech was a success. I wonder how everyone would react if she were to actually come over here. Oh, I'm sorry. Listen to me going on and on about myself. I have to stop babbling when I get nervous. Um, your group is scheduled for a special lecture soon. The classroom is on the second floor. I have some arrangements to make with your student council, so please excuse me. Did I just hear her say special lecture? We came all this way to be lectured? Didn't you already know that? It was part of King Moron's itinerary. Let's see, our class is... It's being taught by someone named Mr. Etagawa. The lecture's about... Kabbalah. Kabbalah what? You don't know? It's a casino. So, when's our free period? Uh, ooh, we don't get one. We have classes all through today. Tonight and tomorrow we'll be staying at a hotel. We'll have free time tomorrow and the day after until we leave at noon. You gotta be kidding me. Well, at least we get some free time. Come on, guys. Let's focus on our studies for now so we can enjoy our free time later. I can confirm this is sadly pretty accurate to a lot of school trips. Yeah, we know you. And yeah, that is actually what Yasugami's school name means. Okay then. Well, this is strangely appropriate to us considering our starting persona. I have a lot of theories about Mr. Edogawa. He seems to know way, like, his lectures are always way too fitting for the kind of mythology that you're dealing with in any given storyline. Just like Orpheus went to the underworld to rescue his wife, who was the Persona 3 protagonist default Persona, there are a lot of similarities. Now, I intentionally didn't go into this part in detail during Izanagi's bio because it was going to be explained here. Yeah, they're both like male who invites and female who invites. And I suppose we received our invitation into fully investigating the case through Izanagi. I know there are several uh, different places in Japan that are considered to be um, uh, Ame no Iwato, I think, the place where Amaterasu sealed herself, but this is different.
I am a little annoyed that in the anime they cut down this lecture heavily. I can see why they did it because they wanted to fit the entire school trip into one episode. Also, he didn't sound nearly like I imagined his voice sounding to myself. It's hard for me to describe the voice that I imagined for Mr. Edogawa. It's honestly a little like Igor's, although not as, as older sounding. Seaside City Hotel. Alrighty, here we are. The Seaside Clamshell Inn. We'll be staying here tonight. So a hotel with a bunch of garbage bags right outside is not a good sign. Is this really a regular hotel? So what do you think? It was me who found this place. Bad sign number two. It just opened not too long ago. It's got that modern look. And the price was right. By right, I'm guessing extremely low. Personally, I think it was an excellent choice. Bad sign number three. We're staying here? I mean, the sign says hotel, but... It opened recently. Dude, this totally looks like a lot... You there, don't just stand there. Keep marching in. So, you will know exactly what this place is if you played Persona 3. Isn't there something funny about this place? Yeah, there was a shadow incident in one of the full moons here, but thankfully there won't be mind control this time. But yeah, this place either used to be or still is a, um, love hotel. They're kind of infamous. And, yeah, basically they're hotels where people go to, um, to do things with each other discreetly. Some of them even have multiple exits so that, um, people don't get caught having affairs. Is there? We don't have these modern hotels in Inaba, so I can't tell. Well, I mean, if those reporters from Yukio Social Inc. had their way, you probably would. Um, this area is called Shirakawa Boulevard, and it's... That's all right, Rise. I don't think I want to know. <laughs> Faster than I expected. This is quite the hotel. If they were to meet me, I wonder, what would the look on Yosuke's face be? Uh, who's that? Look, up there! <gasps> it can't be. Teddy, what are you doing here? The lonely bear inside of me went stir crazy. If only I could detect people in the real world. How did you get here? Do you have some special ability? Eh, I took the train. I swore off Topsicles and saved up the money I got working at Juness. This is why we shouldn't have talked about the school trip within earshot of him. I knew where you were going thanks to Yosuke's trip guide. You guys have free time tomorrow, right? No use hiding it. I already know. How in the world did you make it here looking like that? I mean, why wear the bear suit here? I almost got thrown in the trash a couple times. You're not even gonna explain that, are you? I guess just because it's funnier. But I kept hanging on to the promise Chie-chan made to go on a date with me. That's what gave me strength to carry on. Uh, good job, Teddy. <laughs> did, did I promise that? <laughs> oh, yeah, I do remember saying that I'd go out with you someday. Remember, Chie Chan? Is it okay with Yuki Chan and Rise Chan too? Let's all go together then. Is that alright with you? Mm. It's a deal. I've been here before, so I'll show you around tomorrow. I guess we can go shopping first, and I know a great place we can hit later on. The antiques, the police station, or maybe, um, Aohige. Ooh, shopping! That sounds great! <laughs> 
The other students don't know Port Island that well, so they're just gonna go wherever the school recommends. Well, I guess a shopping spree beats a factory tour. All right, we're in two. <laughs> Leave it to me. Good thing we have someone who knows the area here. Now, before the fun starts, we gotta deal with this guy. Can't you sleep outside for the night? That suit should keep you nice and cozy. Cruelty to animals! You don't know how much trouble I went through to get here! I took the slow train all this way! Do you hear? The slow train! Yeah, considering that a lot of major areas in Japan take a couple of hours by bullet train... Yeah, that probably took a while. Now, now, you kids aren't bickering about your room allocations, are you? What's the matter? Oh, what's this giant teddy bear? My, you must have some nimble fingers. <laughs> you just get innuendos out of everything, don't you? All right, now hurry on inside with it. By the way, these rooms are amazing. Every room has a waterbed. Admittedly, waterbeds are kind of fun. But uh, don't flip the wrong switch when you're turning on the lights, or your bed will start spinning. This is actually true in the anime. Anyways, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Yeah, but I'm exhausted. For so many reasons. I think Kashiwagi froze him. I love that this is a rank up. Oh, and it also lets him cure severe ailments. I gotta pee. And I love Sam Reeves' delivery there too. Okay, so this is something that I have not actually mentioned yet. These mid-cutscene save points are golden exclusive, which a lot of people are immensely relieved at because of the one that happened after Shadow Mitsuo. Originally, that wasn't there, which meant that if you somehow screwed up and needed to reload a save, you'd have to find Shadow Mitsuo again. Here, I appreciate this because you've got a save point in the middle of a set of uh, long cutscenes, and also, the scene that's coming up has a few branching dialogue choices that you might want to check out with save and reload abuse, so... Good job, Golden Developers, for putting a save point here. It even says Clamshell Inn Evening. Your only chance to get that as your save location. Unfortunately, we don't get to explore around the place. But we do get to go somewhere else that might be familiar. Whoa! So this is a club. Kind of surprised you'd never been in one, Kanji. Also, great use of the FES opening movie theme here. Woo! I'm totally ready for this! There's nothing like this back home. Is it permitted for high school students such as yourselves to be here? Um, speak for yourself. What? Dude, look who's talking. You were here before we were. Let me guess, you're only here to get directions on how to get away from here. I know I used that joke earlier. That's right. I guess if the first years came on the trip, you'd be here too. The clientele here seems above board, so I don't expect there'll be any problems. Huh? You're leaving? Why don't you join us? Are you... asking me to stay? Uh-huh. We didn't get to chat last time. Uh, I... it's just that I had some matters to attend to that day. Laura, I get the feeling you always have matters to attend to. Come on, take some time to relax for once. Well, you're free now, right? 
I was really eager to talk to you. I'm curious how someone my age is working as a detective. Says the one who's a superstar at your age. How about it? Mm, very well, if you insist. Huh? What's up? You look a little red. Th that's not true. Wait here. I'll go reserve the area upstairs for us. Okay. Wait, what? Reserve? Yep. Don't worry. I think I can pull some strings. Well, here's where her ex-idol background is useful. Uh, also, mm. speaking of red... What's wrong, man? Stomach pains? Mm, that ain't it. That doesn't like another one. Anyway! I think this is exactly where we hung out with that monk, Mutatsu, before. Are you sure this is alright? Isn't it expensive? No worries. Two years ago when I had a secret show here, the power went out in the middle of it and the gig was cancelled. Little does Rise know that the reason why the power went out is because... That's, That's the, the source. source! It's connected, it's connected to, to all those cables. Alright, let's kick some ass. <laughs> yeah, so... If things have been any different, the Persona 3 and Persona 4 cars might have met much, much earlier. Or at least Rise. This line also leads to something kind of disturbing as well, because that means that Rise was still an idol when she was like 13, and was probably dressing in those kind of outfits too. Yeah. They still owe me from then, so they're willing to put this one on the house. <laughs> well, in that case, I'm gonna order more! Woo! I'm not gonna hold back either. Oh boy, the um the people who own this place are probably panicking right now. Dude, you sound even weirder today. Oh, you're so cold, Kanji. Hmm. Kanji, Kanji, Kanji. I conjecture that something's up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great one. I think this is something to do with like e kanji or like a pun on kanji uh, meaning feelings in Japanese. Man, you're already in high gear. Of all the people to get drunk, Teddy is probably one of the worst you could think of. <laughs> and that would be second worst. She's looser than usual, too. Hey, wait a sec. Are these liquor? Uh, I told them to give us soft drinks. They're non alcoholic. I love the drunk Rise portrait, by the way. Mm -hmm. I told them. Really, I did. Really. Oh, sheesh. I was wondering why it's so hot. Is this seriously booze? But the smells... King's game! Times like this, adults play the king's game. It's the law. <laughs> What's their problem? They make me act like a dense, call me resent and stuff, and then say I'm a kid? It's so obvious. Those rap parties get a lot funner after I go home. Morons! I'm gonna play the king's game now, and ain't no one gonna stop me. Yet another side of Risa exposed. I wonder if she knows what she's saying. I also like the fact that Yukiko and Teddy are not sweat dropping at this. Kanji! <laughs> Get the chopsticks ready! What? Why me? The king's word is law! Jump, jump! It's already started? And nobody wants to get hit with Rampage, so do what the king says. Um, what's this king's game again? In the anime, you already has a set of chopsticks prepared. Okay. 
One chopstick makes you the king if you draw it, and the others have numbers on them. The king picks the number and says what that person has to do. But who has which number is a secret until the king gives the orders. Senpai, you're such an adult. You tell him. Y Yukiko, where'd you learn this stuff? Come on, everyone draw. And so, which chopstick you draw will determine somebody's fate. For this, I'm going to choose to draw the far one. Number one, but that doesn't mean we're the king. Okay, so... who's the king? Because the king doesn't get a number. Teddy's is red! Red! Is Teddy the king? Oh no. Of course, we get the worst possible king for the first one. Uh, we're already doomed from the get-go. I, the king, command thee to smooch the king without delay. Smooch! Smooch! Please, God, grant me a girl. Number one! I'm at number two! No take backs! Smooch! Smooch! A bear's chastity. True love needs a sacrifice just for you, Sensei Teddy. Uh, hey, not me! Uh <laughs> oh Only the first round and two contestants have dropped out already. Kanji took a mortal blow for us. We must honor his sacrifice. Huh? Is it that kind of game? So no matter what you choose for that first one, Teddy and Kanji are both ours. Now, for this one, I guess we should draw the near one. You actually always end up as the king for round two. Who's the king? Phew, someone decent. No crazy orders this time. Yes, no crazy orders. It's not like the lingering influence of a certain Casanova who frequented this place is in the atmosphere and might possess somebody who was to draw the king stick and... Oh no. No, 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 no! That's not how it goes. If the last king demanded a smooch, then the next order's gotta be more extreme. T.A., don't be such a party pooper. <laughs> hey! The person who gets picked should have to rest their head on the king's lap. <laughs> nah, make him sit on his lap. Oh, or they could have to hug him. Better than that, a piggyback ride. Come on, king! Who's gonna do what? We have four choices here. All of them result in different people and they all give social link points towards that person. I'll just say one of these options is Yosuke and he indeed gets social link points from it. So um, yet more evidence that he totally wasn't planned to be a romance option or anything. We're going to choose number one rest on my lap. Yes! I'm number one! What? Oh man, you don't know how much I want to trade places with you right now. Oh, believe me, you're an option for this. <laughs> Senpai's lap is so warm. It feels so nice. Right now, I won't spoil um, who are the other options. I might show them later, but... <laughs> me next! Me! I'm the 
king. Actually, the queen. You didn't even draw a chopstick. All right, then. Let's have someone talk about something really embarrassing that they'd never want to tell anyone. Hmm, let's see. Oh, no, Tokun. I choose you. She's breaking all the rules. Just ignore her, Naoto. No. No, that won't be necessary. One stipulation, though. If I do this, the rest of you must reveal something as well. Okay, so this is one of those kind of games. Okay! No particularly embarrassing experiences come to mind. Would discussing my life be fair game? You know, my first thought was Yosuke's here and his entire life is an embarrassment, so yeah, that's fine. It's the rare situation like this that gives me call to speak of such things. Damn, way to kill the mood. The Shiragane family has been detectives for generations now. We lend our powers to the police from time to time. Just something to quickly mention, I was actually wrong about what Shiragane meant earlier. It's actually White Bell, not White Metal. Still a pretty cool name. For generations? Wow, it's like that guy from a movie I watched before. What was his name? Kuzu Noha? And a line I've been waiting to talk about for ages! This is referencing the Raido Kuzunoha series, which is another Shin Megami Tensei spin-off that's led many people to believe that it and Persona take place in the same universe. But what these people don't realise is, this reference is English version exclusive. In the Japanese version, she compared Naoto's family to the Kindaichi family. I'm guessing the reference was changed because of potential rights issues. I mean, Atlas obviously has the rights to Kuzunoha because it's their own game, but Kindaichi might have been a little bit suspect. But yeah, the implications of a shared universe, not there in the Japanese version, so just remember that, all you theorists. In days gone by when there were no crime scene investigators, consulting detectives were considered more valuable. Consulting detective is something Sherlock Holmes used to call himself. Thus my grandfather still has a strong connection with the police, and looks after me, despite my youth and inexperience. But investigators nowadays are well versed in science and medicine, so I must further my studies. That sounds tough. Uh... That's it? No punchline? <sighs> I fear you may be looking to the wrong person for that. Oh, embarrassing! Isn't Hotokun embarrassing? I want to go home. Oof, I'm sleepy. <laughs> well then, it's your turn now. We're all just going to ignore the fact that she's fallen asleep right there. Straight answer, please. What is your true involvement with the murder case? We all knew this was coming. You know, you're so good at killing the mood that it's almost funny. Well, we go rescuing people who've been kidnapped by jumping into the TV. Yukiko! And then we do stuff like Persona! With our personas and beat the crap out of shadows. You idiot! <sighs> Are you making fun of me? It's true! Persona! Gee, someone put these two drunks to bed already. I see now that you had no intention of telling me the truth. Yeah, well, um, the good news is that blurting this out isn't going to mean anything when it's so ridiculous no one ever believe it. But I'm curious, how did you become so inebriated? This isn't alcohol. Good one, Naoto! No, I confirmed it when I first entered. No alcohol has been served here since a rash of drunk driving last year. Huh? Does that mean we're all just drunk off the atmosphere? Who cares? <laughs> I feel so good. Good night! Hey, senpai! How the hell are we going to get back with two passed out drunks? 
Well, I would say we carry them back, but that'd probably make Risa faint from the sheer fangirlness. Well, this is giving me a big headache. Is this what a hangover feels like? Yes, the fake drunkenness is so powerful, it's giving everyone a fake hangover. Teddy's still totally okay. <laughs> Let's keep drinking till morning. <laughs> Bring it on. As I said, you haven't been drinking alcohol. Are you a pack of imbeciles? And there goes something that would become Naoto's catchphrase in certain sections of the fandom. But yeah, that scene. That scene, believe it or not, is cited on the ESRB page for this game as one of the reasons why it got its M rating. Teenagers getting fake drunk. Yeah. And we get another save point after that. Day three. Everyone is hungover. Mm, oh man, this is really something. This place serves the best ramen in town. When we were filming, a lot of times I came here instead of eating box lunches. Hmm? You're not hungry? Um, <laughs> what happened last night? I don't remember much about it. You know, probably for the best you don't remember. Oh, I think the two of us fell asleep quick. I heard it got pretty wild, though. Yeah, whose fault was that? I see. I don't remember at all. <laughs> ah, this flavor never changes. I couldn't come here too often because it's high in carbohydrates, so being able to eat as much as I want is like a dream. What about protein, though? Ooh, this is delicious. It has an interesting taste that makes you hungry for more. See? See? Another bowl, please. Keep the noodles hard. Oh, I want ramen now. Um, I'll have the hug of curry bowl. The Haga Curry Bowl's a normal menu item now? Oh, I should have asked. The Moon Social Link in Persona 3 say that that was a secret menu item that they only serve to certain customers, but seems like they're not doing that anymore. Oh well, this is just as good. Hey, is it okay for you to be out in the open like this? Sure, no prob. See those signing boards? My autograph's up there too, but the cook doesn't give me a second glance. That's just how it is over here. Plus, I'm barely wearing any makeup. Oh, you're right. There's a lot of autographs on display. Including the autograph of the mysterious hand man, apparently. You know what I think? The reason they don't notice you is because this bear sticks out like a sore thumb. I guess if he wore that over here, he'll have to go home wearing it. Isn't it all steamy inside from the ramen? Huh? Where's my bowl? You didn't eat it, did you? Y you didn't finish, so... <laughs> I was going to finish it! Hey, didn't you just order more a second ago? How many have you eaten? I don't know how to count. You little liar, give me that check. Let's see here. Ten bowls? Yuki-chan's makes it eleven. I was going to finish mine. They were there. I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's close to the meeting time. Yeah, there always has to be that one student who brings things down by making us follow the rules. Oh, already? I thought the trip was going to be a bore, but now that it's over... I actually had a good time! Hey! Let's buy a souvenir at the station! I bet Nanako-chan will be expecting one! For this, the best option is the Iwatodai lamp. Alright, let's get going. Come on, Teddy, we're leaving. Yo! Hey, Ted! Don't make me rub your fur the wrong way, you little...
D dude hey he ain't moving I is he hibernating hey no, don't don't tell me it's not because he's been in our world too long is it are you serious teddy <laughs> my tummy's heavy and false alarm leave it behind I ate too much. Can't move. Someone carry me. I mustn't be late for our rendezvous. Please excuse me. So now Zo is not even going to question the fact that we have a living bear suit in our employ. The detective. Oh, Yukiko, wait for me. Can't Morgana spot you with your secret say oh wait a minute, you don't have one. Farewell, Teddy. We shall leave you here, along with our memories of youth. <laughs> and so Teddy died, the end. But yeah, that Morgana secret savings thing is a real mechanic in Persona 5 to stop you from getting stuck if you don't have enough money to afford the train fare. Yeah, we definitely did. Not in the ways we expected to. Yep, for sure. I'm sure there are some places there Nanako would like. She'd probably like the maybe the play equipment near the shrine. I want to go to Destiny Sea too. There's this roller coaster that goes whoosh into the water, and they had a Destiny Land there the whole time, and Gary Stu never invited any girls there. What is this? Oh, you're back. We just missed each other, huh? Look, my big bro got me a souvenir. Hey, nice. Did you remember to thank him? Of course. Huh. I guess that came out of your own pocket. Thanks. You went to Tatsumi Port Island, yeah? <laughs> I guess the city was no big deal for a guy like you. Have you ever been out there? By the way, if the first years went along with you, Naoto Shirogane must have been there too. Yeah, he was, um, uh, interesting. You talk to him much? He's mature for his age, but he's still a year younger than you. Try to make friends with him, will you? He's a cocky brat, but he's honest. The higher-ups are losing their patience with him. It doesn't matter if his argument holds water or not. At this rate, he won't accomplish anything but getting himself booted off the team. I thought Adachi was the one in the police force who was supposed to be blabbing everything to us. Adults can be a selfish bunch. Well, you'd be right at home in Persona 5. Oh, sorry. You must be tired. Why don't you take a bath? Oh, but don't forget to take your stuff upstairs. Nanako, can you get the bath ready? If you're ever staying at a uh, Japanese place, never ever drain the bath water. That is like one of the first things you learn not to do. Now I'm glad that the uh, day after the school trip is a Sunday so we get some time to relax after all that. And home shopping channels. So overall thoughts on the school trip. I think it's a pretty good set of scenes overall, like it is really mostly Persona 3 fan service and as a huge fan of Persona 3, like I actually rank Persona 3 as one of my favourite video games of all time, actually possibly my actual favourite video game of all time, 
I'm a bit biased in that regard, but I do like that the character they chose to have make a cameo was not a party member, that it was one of the more minor NPC social link characters. I thought that was good, it would have been a bit too cliche to have it be a major party member. And uh, I, I like the voice they gave Chihiro, I like that those subtle nods to her development back in Persona 3. All of the subtle nods there, you don't need to fully understand them to really appreciate those scenes. They're just there and they add a little bit of um, extra if you have played P3. I was incredibly shocked that Persona 5 didn't do an Inaba trip, uh, like, in the same way. Although Persona 3 Portable actually had a call forward to Inaba, so that's kind of interesting. And in terms of the comedy, one thing that I've always really liked is actors pretending to be drunk. I just feel like they must have a really good time doing it. And Laura Bailey and Amanda Winley are just fantastic in that scene. The King's Game is one of the most remembered scenes in Persona 4 for good reason. And it's also not entirely filler either, because it elaborates a bit more on Naoto. So yeah, overall I like the school trip, but then again, I am biased. Please, God, grant me a girl. Number three! Ah! I'm at number two! No take backs. Smooch! Smooch! Kanji! So you were after my fuzzy fur! Okay, but it's my first time. Be gentle. Hey, quit that! Don't make me flatten you, damn it! Ah! No! Hey, help! Oh. Huh? Number two? The king's order is. Absolute! <laughs> You gotta sit closer up! Yukiko, quiet! <laughs> I'm number three! Y yukiko san? How else would you hug someone who's sitting down? <laughs> uh, there's three girls here and I get chosen? The king's order is... Absolute! <laughs> A piggyback ride? Not cool, man. Not cool. Ha ha! Yeah! Uh, you've had enough, right? Please show some mercy. <laughs> 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 